right, welcome to the next Prophecy Update. We got a bunch of stuff on Israel today and a couple little miscellaneous things from the United States. Abbas agrees to Israeli control over Jewish holy sites. According to the report, Abbas offered Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu a set of concrete proposals for a peace deal, including proposals on border and security arrangements. Abbas is said to have proposed the creation of a Palestinian state within the 1967 borders, with a land swap encompassing two point three percent which would leave larger settlement blocks in return the Palestinians would get land bordering the southwest bank in addition to the land for a passageway between the West Bank and the Gaza Abbas presented a softened stance on East Jerusalem which would become the future capital of the Palestinian state Abbas reportedly proposed that Israel would retain control over the old city Jewish quarter and the Western Wall, while the rest of the East Jerusalem would be open to worshippers of all religions. Netanyahu has only rep responded to Mitchell by saying that he wants face-to-face -face talks with Abbas. The Palestinians have been wary of direct negotiations, fearing that Netanyahu wants to bring them to the table in order to decrease international pressure on Israel with no intention of signing a deal. Netanyahu this week called on Abbas to enter direct negotiations. I'm ready anytime, Netanyahu said. Let's not waste another 15 months before we sit down together. Netanyahu rules out apology to Turkey over deadly raid. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Friday praised talks aimed at mending ties after deadly raids on the Gaza-bound Turkish ship, but ruled out an apology. Israel cannot apologize because its soldiers had to defend themselves, Netanyahu said. Although the flotilla incident is kind of old news now, it brought a lot of things to the surface. A lot of anti-Israel people finally revealed themselves after this flotilla incident. I believe most anti-Israel nations are on standby mode and are simply waiting for something to happen so they have a reason to get out in the streets and proclaim to be pro-Palestinian. As the word says, all nations will turn against Israel. This flotilla incident was a perfect example of the nations turning against Israel. Immediately after the flotilla incident, we saw protesters from all over the world. Anti-Israel riots held in Turkey. Anti-Israel riots held in the Netherlands. In Greece, members of the Communist Labor Union burn Israeli and U.S. flag in a protest. Indonesia, students dress up as an Israeli soldier pointing a gun at the Palestinian man during a protest against Israel's attack on the flotilla aid. Malaysia, pro-Palestinian protests burn a photograph of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during a demonstration outside the U.S. Embassy. Egyptian activists chant and hold anti-Israeli slogans, demanding the closure of the Israeli Embassy and the expulsion of the ambassador. Palestinian refugees and Lebanese carry a huge Turkish flag during an anti-Israel protest in front of the UN headquarters. Belgium demonstrators hold Turkish flags outside the Belgium Foreign Affairs Building. Anti-Israel riots held in London. Los Angeles, California, a demonstrator's protest against anti-Israeli commando raid outside of Israel consulate. Abbas says Israel must accept foreign border force. Palestinian President Abbas said he'll resume peace talks if Israel accepts its 1967 frontier as a baseline for the borders of a Palestinian state and agrees to deployment of an international force to guard them. Palestinian leader did not mention a comprehensive Israeli settlement freeze as a condition for no negotiations. 
something he has underlined as a critical in the past. Netanyahu has refused to be pinned down on a framework for negotiations, insisting on talks without conditions. Hezbollah advances 20,000 troops to Israeli border. Israel responded to the escalation on July 7th by doing something it has never done before. The chief of the northern borders exhibited to the public area photos and intelligent maps recording the new spread of Hezbollah forces. He reported 20,000 armed men scattered through 160 villages and towns only in the south where its presence is prohibited by the UN-mediated ceasefire of 2006. The images did not include the substantial strength Hezbollah maintains in central Lebanon or its estimated 40,000 rockets and missiles. Israel is beefing up its strength along the Lebanese border. And the next day, July 8th, Jerusalem Center for Terrorist Threat published a warning to Israelis abroad, including the United States, to beware of abductions and murderous attacks. We know from previous articles that Hezbollah and other nations surrounding Israel are trying to provoke a summer war. Things are definitely really starting to change in Jerusalem with 20,000 troops on the border. A war is about to break out. With the 9th of Av around the corner, it's a definitely time to keep your eyes on Jerusalem and what is happening in that area of the world. Arab League will declare Palestinian state if peace talks fail. The Arab League will turn to the United Nations Security Council to to declare an independent Palestinian state of peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians do not bear fruit by September. They're saying that they're going to unilaterally declare Israel a Palestinian state. They're trying to bring in foreign troops now, which is absolutely unfathomable. The fact that we are seeing this in our own lifetime is very crazy. Although they've been going back and forth, back and forth with these with this peace talk for years and years and years, we are finally starting to see some changes in the way that they are negotiating. Netanyahu saying that he will sit down and have direct negotiations. That in itself is a big deal. The Arab League is threatening to declare a Palestinian state if peace talks fail. The powers that be are saying that they want and they will have a Palestinian state by 2012. We are definitely about to see the fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy very, very soon. So be ready and be watching. Florida School District bans Bibles on Religious Freedom Day. According to the Liberty Council, the school board allowed world changers to distribute free Bibles to students during Religious Freedom Day. But now the school officials claim the Bibles do not provide any educational benefit to the students and distribution should be stopped. Police say prayer illegal on U.S. Supreme Court grounds. A teacher at the Wickenburg Christian Academy in Arizona, along with her students and a few adults, were taking an educational tour of the Supreme Court complex. After arriving at the Oval Plaza, they stood off to the side at the bottom of the steps, bowed their heads, and quietly prayed amongst themselves to God. Even though they were not obstructing traffic or demonstrating, a court police officer approached the group and told them to stop praying in the public area immediately. The religious freedom in the United States of America is dwindling down to nothing. By allowing one liberty to be taken away, you have started a cycle that only ends in enslavement. They're banning prayer in nursing homes, they're banning prayer in schools, they're banning the teaching of the Lord in local parks, they're throwing Christians in jail. I think the Lord's trying to wake and shake the people of the United States of America and get them aware and alert to what's happening. The United States of America is about to face the worst persecution it has ever seen. We all have to get our hearts and our spirits ready for the days ahead because they are going to be troubled times. The leaders of this nation have turned against God and they have turned against Israel. Please don't be taken off guard and please don't be taken as a thief.